let's pivot and talk about the brain a little bit. This is an area where y- your own knowledge has grown rapidly, Tom. This is clearly an area of immense curiosity for you, for me, um, because you know cholesterol plays an important role in the brain. Uh, I think to to put it mildly, um, and people have many questions about the role of cholesterol lowering therapy and brain health. So. Um, what, let's just start with a basic question, which is what role does cholesterol play in the brain? Um, and what do we know about the different pools of cholesterol? We have cholesterol outside of the central nervous system, cholesterol inside the central nervous system. Can they move back and forth? Can lipoproteins go back and forth? Is LDL taking cholesterol into the brain and back? To Tell us about how that whole system works. So important. I'm glad we're going to chat about this a little bit. And it's obviously so complex. Really, I almost give you credit. You're the guy who got me interested in lipids in the brain probably 15 years ago when you introduced me to Richard Isaacson at the Cornell Dementia Clinic. And he was very interested in lipids because he just knew lipids are part of what's going on in the brain. And I better learn more about lipids. And you were good buddies. And I got dra- pulled into that circle. So that's I, I, I like how you said dragged initially. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, pull, pulled slowly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a strong guy, Peter. You, uh, you've uh, motivated me to study a lot of things that maybe I wouldn't have uh, tripped into. And that uh, I don't know that. I would have ever met a Richard Isaacson had it not been for you, but thank God you did. And so we've been trying to learn about brain and the lipids so often. The last thing I'll say, you did that great podcast with Dan Rader on HDLs, and it's a podcast everybody should listen to. But at the end, you sort of turned to Dan and you said, where are we going with lipids, Dan? We've sort of solved the ApoB. We're learning a lot now about HDL. And Dan said, it's lipids in the brain is the next frontier. And why has that not been studied very much until now? Because you can't stick a needle. You have to go into the you get cerebral spinal fluid to analyze what's going on in the brain. And uh, most people are amenable to a vena puncture in their elbow, not a spinal tap. So here's what's going on. Cholesterol is almost certainly the most important molecule in the brain. The brain is by far the most cholesterol-carrying organ in the body. The brain actually makes more cholesterol than any other organ per se, way more than the liver even. So if I gave you a dumb question, hey, I'm a, I got this body here and I want to find out where all the cholesterol is, where should I go? Open his skull and take out the brain. That's where you're going to find the most cholesterol. Wow. So obviously cholesterol is crucial to the brain. And that's because the brain is made up of a lot of cells, all of which have important functions, especially those neurons that shoot off all the action potentials that make our body function and everything. And what's on the surface of a neuron? Free cholesterol and phospholipids. So evolution, I guess, figured out a long time ago that the brain needs cholesterol. So we're not going to make the brain dependent on cholesterol that's floating around the plasma or what's in your liver or your intestine. We're going to let the brain make all the cholesterol it needs. So we're going to really drive the enzymes that uh, synthesize cholesterol in the brain. So the brain needs cholesterol. To make a long story short, every cholesterol molecule that's in the brain got there by de novo synthesis in the brain. Not a single molecule of cholesterol was delivered from the periphery, meaning that floating around our plasma leaves the plasma and enters the brain. Now, by the way, where is all the cholesterol in our plasma? Well, I've already told you, it's got to be inside of a lipoprotein floating in plasma. That's where we measure cholesterol. That's where we measure lipids in the plasma. But I can assure you there is no cholesterol-carrying particle in the plasma, be it a VLDL, an HDL, uh, or an LDL, that crosses the blood-brain barrier and says, okay, brain, here's your cholesterol for today. Doesn't happen. There is a rapid turnover of cholesterol in the periphery. Cells make it. They get rid of what they don't need. It's brought back to the liver uh, for, to, for the liver to decide what to do with it. The turnover time for cholesterol in the plasma is two to three days. All right. So if a cholesterol molecule is synthesized in the brain, what is its half-life? Five years. Mm. Now, half-life, if a half-life is uh, a given number, the total 
sort of brain resonance time of that cholesterol molecule is you multiply that by seven. So uh, some cholesterol molecules last up to 30 years once they're synthesized in the brain. And that's why cholesterol synthesis in the brain starts in utero. Early on, mom's supplying the little fetal brain with a lot of cholesterol, but very rapidly, second, third trimester, those brain cells start making their own cholesterol. Once a child is born, there's a lot of cholesterol synthesis going on by virtually every cell that exists in the brain. There's only like three of them. But at a certain point, somewhere between the ages of five and 10, the brain may has made all the cholesterol it needs. So then only two cells continue to make cholesterol. So lesson number two, what are the cells in the brain that we're in this conversation with? Neurons I've mentioned. In uh, utero and in childhood, neurons produce a lot of cholesterol. But at a certain age, the neurons got more work to do. They don't want to make cholesterol. Why? Because every cholesterol molecule requires 27 molecules of ATP to produce. It's a super energy-driven process. Neurons need ATP for a lot of other functions, those electrical charges they make. All right. So what are the other two cells in the brain? oligodendrocytes make the most cholesterol. And where does the cholesterol they make become? Myelin, which coats every nerve ending, every axon and dendrite in your body. So uh, the, those oligodendrocytes are big time cholesterol producers, but they uh, make all their cholesterol go to myelin. They don't send any cholesterol over to neurons. So what is the other cell? And it's astrocytes. And and again, in infancy and childhood and utero, oligodendrocytes, astrocytes, and neurons are making cholesterol like there's no tomorrow. Once the neuron stops making it, astrocytes are the sole maker of cholesterol that supplies the neurons. But how would an astrocyte synthesize cholesterol and send it over to the neurons? Aha! The brain has to have a lipoprotein system just like the periphery does. Now, between astrocytes and neurons is basically it's brain interstitial fluid, sort of a loose connective tissue. It's called the matrosome. So if astrocytes synthesize cholesterol, they obviously have to package it inside of a brain lipoprotein, secrete that lipoprotein, which swims through the matrosome and goes over. And guess what the neuron expresses? LDL receptors, LDL receptor related protein, or something called the scavenger receptor, all of which can bind to the type of lipoprotein that an astrocyte produces. So the brain also has a lipoprotein delivery system, but here's the difference. What is the main structural protein in the periphery, ApoB or ApoA1? What is the main structural protein in the brain, ApoE? So when an astrocyte makes a lipoprotein, it's an ApoE-containing lipoprotein. And by the way, they're smaller, much smaller than the particles the brain, uh, that we find in the periphery. If we put them in a centrifuge, they have the density of a high-density lipoprotein that would uh, floats around the periphery. So they're often called brain HDLs, but don't confuse brain HDLs with peripheral HDLs. Because most of the brain HDLs have ApoE as their structural protein. In the periphery, they have ApoA1. Here's where the story gets a little more complicated, as always. What is the smallest apoprotein the body can make? It's, it's actually apoprotein A1, which is why an HDL needs four or five of them. So if ApoA1 can dissociate from an HDL, and we do have free HDL in the plasma, that's measurable, it is small enough that it can cross the blood-brain barrier. And once it joins the blood-brain barrier, what is the small ApoA1 looking for? An HDL buoyancy particle. So it joins with the ApoE particles. So the brain lipoproteins are all ApoE, or they're all ApoE plus ApoA1. And you can have multiple copies of each of those on those particles. So, wow. So now... As long as the ApoA1, by the way, which can bind to an LDL receptor or the scavenger receptor, same with the ApoE, 
the uh, neuron can grab them and either internalize them or delipidate them, and the neuron gets its cholesterol, and the neuron's happy. And then the delipidated particles can go right back and fill up the astrocyte again. So that's brain cholesterol transformation. Uh, 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 uh.